Hey guys, so today I want to talk about uh, no salvation outside the church, uh, the way this uh, doctrine was and dogma was taught and understood in the medieval uh, period with like Augustine uh, and how it's different than the way it's taught now. Uh, so let's just dive into Augustine. So sometimes when this topic comes up and my fellow Catholics who work in apologetics who want to say that, you know, the way the church currently parses this out in terms of like, yes, non-Catholics can be saved, even the Catholic Catechism speaks of Protestants as those who have been justified and who do share in the life of grace, that this understanding doesn't contradict the, the medieval church's understanding. And they'll they'll point to a quote from Augustine in his work on baptism against the Donatists um, that says, you know, many who seem to be within are in reality without. Many who seem to be without are really within. Yet we speak of within and without in relation to the church. It is the position of the heart we must consider not that of the body. And they'll give this as a, a, a quote, a, a proof that Augustine would have understood that some people can be in the church even if their body isn't visibly in the church. Um, however, in context, that's not what Augustine's saying. Um, Augustine is explicit in this work uh, that non-Catholic Christians cannot be saved um, even if they're sincerely ignorant of the truth of the Catholic faith and they truly believe they're in the true church um, and they have every single virtue possible that they can have, they're still damned if they're not Catholic. Now, but what does this quote mean? When he, when he says, some who are within are really without, some who are without are really within. And when we consider within and without in relation to the church, it's the position of the heart that we must consider and not that of the body. What's he talking about? He's talking about God's foreknowledge, actually. Um, he, he in All throughout his, this work on baptism, he's arguing that um, you don't need to re-baptize someone when they come into the church if they've been given a valid baptism outside of the church. And his theology, although a baptism, a valid baptism given outside the church, will not regenerate the person. They won't receive the salvific graces of the baptism outside the church. Yet when they come into the church, then that baptism will become profitable for them and they'll receive those graces. And um, so it, with that in mind, uh, let's let's read the fuller quote here uh, that this comes from. It's from Book 5, uh, Chapters 27, 28 of, uh, on Baptism Against the Donatists. So he says, There are some also who as of yet live wickedly, or even lie in heresies or the superstitions of the Gentiles. And yet even then, the Lord knows them that are his. For in that unspeakable foreknowledge of God, many who seem to be without are in reality within. For some who have been baptized without may be considered, through the foreknowledge of God, to have really been baptized within. Because within the water begins to be profitable to them unto salvation. So in the foreknowledge of God, although they've been baptized outside, then it hasn't been profitable for them outside. Yet God knows they will become Catholic. And when they become Catholic, that baptism will become profitable for them. And he's not just talking about heretics and schismatics. He says there's some who also as yet live wickedly or even lie in heresies or the superstitions of the Gentiles. And yet even then, the Lord knows them that are his. So he's not saying, you know, there are these good, virtuous, non-Christian Catholics, and the Lord knows that they're really Catholic in heart, even though visibly and in their body they're not Catholic. He's saying, no, like wicked, pagan, superstitious, her heretics, among them there are those who the Lord has. And he knows that when they become Catholic, they will be saved. He knows they're going to come into the fold. They have that maybe they're in a schismatic sect. They've been baptized there. The baptism isn't profitable for them there. But God knows that they're going to come into the church and the baptism will be profitable for them when they come into the church. So that's what he's saying when he says uh, there are some who seem to be without who are really within and some who seem to be within who are really without it's the position of the heart and not that of the body that we should consider uh, just because someone's body is in the church doesn't mean their heart is in the church and just because right now their heart is outside of the church doesn't mean that god doesn't foreknow that they will eventually come into the church um, and and the idea that someone's heart could be in the church and yet their body not be in the church completely foreign to Augustine. Uh, if they were Catholic in their heart, if they believed that the Catholic Church was the true church, 
they would come into the church because that's what they would believe. This idea that you could have like a Catholic heart, but hold to like Donatist or schismatic or Orthodox or Protestant doctrine, completely foreign to Augustine. And he'll say as much here. I'll show you again. Um, Here's a quote. So book one, chapter 12 from the same work, Augustine says this. In the case of the man who, while an enemy to peace and love of Christ, Oh, wait, hold on. This is the wrong quote. Sorry. Let me get the right quote. Um, Okay. So book one, chapter five. Those who are baptized there through ignorance, thinking that it is the true church of Christ, are guilty of less sin in comparison than these, even though they are wounded by the impiety of schism, nor do they escape a grievous hurt, because others suffer even more. For when it is said unto certain men, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom, in the day of judgment than for you. It is not meant that the men of Sodom shall escape torment, but only that others shall be even more grievously tormented. So in Augustine's theology, you have someone who's in a schismatic sect like the Donatists. And the Donatists here, remember, they are not like a um, Jehovah's Witness or a or a Mormon or even a Protestant. Uh, a, a Donatist believes in the Trinity, believes in the Incarnation, believes in the deity of Christ, believes in the sacrifice of the Mass, believes in the priesthood, believes in, you know, all the Catholic doctrines at that time, except for one. They believe that you have to be rebaptized if you are rebaptized by an immoral or schismatic minister. Uh, That's their only difference doctrinally. (laughs) And, uh, And Augustine says, you know, if they're ignorant of the truth of the Catholic Church, and they sincerely believe they're in the true church, still damned. He, and he says, you know, that the, in the gospel, it tells some, you know, it's going to be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than it is for you. And he says, yeah, but that doesn't mean the land of Sodom's getting off. So in his mind, the person in Augustine's mind, the person who is um, in any non-Catholic sect and they're ignorant of the truth of the Catholic Church, and they sincerely believe they're in the right church, and they believe in the Trinity, and they believe in the deity of Christ, and they have valid sacraments, they're still going to be like the, the land of Sodom on the Day of Judgment. Augusta does not allow for the salvation of non-Catholic Christians at all, period. He's explicit in this, and he even compares in the same work on baptism against the Donatists, book 4, chapter 20, he compares two people a heretic or a schismatic, a non-Catholic Christian who has every virtue and is faultless in every way other than the fact that they're not Catholic, and a Catholic who has every carnal vice and sin but has the right Orthodox doctrine. And he compares which one is better. Right? So here it is, Book 4, Chapter 20. Uh, on the question of whether we ought to prefer a Catholic of the most abandoned character, to a heretic in whose life, except that he is a heretic, can find nothing to blame, I do not venture to give a hasty judgment. But supposing, therefore, two men, one a Catholic with all these vices, the other a heretic, free from all from which a heretic can be free. Although they both do not contend against the faith, yet each lives contrary to the faith, and each is deceived by a vain hope. And each is far removed from the charity of spirit, and therefore each is severed from connection with the body of the one dove. So you're a schismat, you're you're a Donatist, you believe in the Trinity, the deity of Christ, you have every single virtue uh, and, and, and grace possible except for that of being Catholic, and you're sincerely ignorant of the truth of the Catholic Church, and you believe you're you're in the true church. Still damned. He's not. He's not willing to say that you're any better than uh, a, a Catholic who's completely carnal and wicked and, and commits every sort of sin. Um, both are disconnected from the body. Both are damned. Both are like those in Sodom on the Day of Judgment in Augustine's view. So um, this is the way that no salvation outside the church was was understood by Augustine, a follower of Augustine, Fulgentius. 
uh, is just as strong. The language from Fulgentius is picked up at the Council of Florence, and they say, you know, you could have all the valid sacraments in the world. You could have, uh, you could believe in the Christ and the Trinity. You can be sincere in that. You could even give up your life as a martyr for Christ, and yet you will go to hell unless you're also a Catholic. That comes from the Council of Florence. And so this is, you know, the doctor of the church, St. Augustine, the most influential, popular, heralded, you know, credible, cre accredited theologian of the entire medieval time until Aquinas, and Aquinas doesn't, you know, allow for it either. Um, no conception of like a non-Catholic Christian having like invincible ignorance and being able to be saved because they don't know the truth about the church, but they're sincere and they really believe that they're in the true church and they have faith in Christ and the Trinity and they repent and they've got all the other virtues of becoming Catholic and no, they're still damned. They're still damned. So this is, you know, this is the way it was, you know, the council of Florence, how, how much clearer could the council of Florence have been? You can have valid sacraments. You can have sincere faith in Christ. You can give up your life as a martyr for Christ. You can do everything, give all of your goods to the poor, die as a martyr for Christ, have valid sacraments. You're still going to hell unless you're a Catholic. Um, so the point of this video is not to advocate for this position. Uh, the current teaching of the Catholic Church is correct. Um, everyone with sincere faith in Christ who repents according to their understanding and gives their life over to Christ uh, is received by him, is, is accepted, justified, forgiven by him. Um, but that is a dramatic change with the way this was understood in the medieval time. Uh, and so uh, to wrap things up here, uh, it is untenable. Rad trad Catholicism, conservative Catholicism, traditionalist Catholicism that says like the way things used to be understood has to continue now. It was always understood the right way in the past and there can't be any big changes. Like you can't change the way we understand things. This has radically changed and for the better. Um, and if you're and if they're going to try to go with the medieval time. And not this, then they're going to have to deny the ecumenical council, Vatican II, the catechism, the popes become set of vacantists, you know. So the the only real tenable position for a Catholic is to be a, a Catholic with a very progressive sense of kind of the possibility of dramatic change in dogma, uh, and that the church could have been you know, very wrong about some pretty big things in the past. All right, guys, thanks for watching. God bless y'all. Love you. Bye.